Oh boy, did somebody say new season? Did somebody say new draft league on top of the three or four that we're already in? Um, man, hi guys. Welcome to the UNPL Spring Fling. Uh, wow, I did not expect to be in this position. I feel like I say that about every league that I join. Um, but decided to join a low-tier draft league, uh, the Uva Naranja Premier League. It's going to be super, super fun. They have like f three different divisions of Wi-Fi coaches. So we're going to be up against seven other really awesome teams um, over the course of seven weeks for a regular season. Top four make playoffs. Pretty pretty cut and dry. Pretty casual thing. Uh, just meant to kind of get some low-tier experience in there and uh, you know have some fun playing some new people. So uh, as with joining a new league... We have a draft review. So we're going to kick right on into things. And uh, I'm going to show you guys the uh, stellar roster that we put together today. Hope you guys really enjoy it. We'll see you over there. All right, everybody. And welcome in to our UNPL draft analysis. Shout out to the P4G for the kind of format inspiration for... Um, the duration of this draft review. Uh, also, spoilers. I changed my entire team uh, from my original draft. Um, I basically used all my free agent transactions because I didn't really vibe with the team I drafted. And I waited until after the grace period because I'm not a very smart person. So uh, what I have here now is what I'm sticking with. Um, so let's, let's go through and see what we have cooking. So as you can see, we get a budget of 95 points. Uh, we have to draft anywhere from 10 to 11 Pokemon. I chose to draft 10 because I feel that's really solid. We also get two Terra Captains that have to be six points or below, and it is an open Terra format. So for our first pick in the UNPL Spring Fling, technically after transactions, it is Snorlax. So uh, I really, really like Snorlax as a Mon in general. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. But in a low tier format, I feel like Snorlax, um, you know, not having to deal with all of the mons that have just experienced uber power creep in the last generation. Uh, I feel like Snorlax could actually be like a really, really reliable Pokemon, both offensively and defensively, you know. Um, with having stuff like Thick Fat and like a base 110 Spideff or whatever it is, uh, this Mon doubles as, you know, a good offensive threat, but also can run like things like Assault Vest or... I could run like curse sets. I could do like a variety of different things. Um, I think that Snorlax, especially only for 11 points, is a really good pillar to sort of build the team around here. And I'm really excited to see uh, what it can do. So that is our first pick. For our second pick in the draft, we picked up another defensive mon, and that is Slowking. Uh, no Galarian Slowking in this format. It's a bit too good. But regular Slowking, I thought, you know, I could use a, a bulky water type. I, I typically draft balance when I draft, and this team is pretty much on par with normal balance. Uh, but the one thing that I lack extremely in a lot of my previous leagues is drafting like actual wall Pokemon. Um, I typically draft mons that have like good natural bulk, but like aren't meant to really, really take hits. Um, so I'm really excited to have Slowking on the team. Uh, gets a crazy good move pool, good utility with things like Thunder Wave. Uh, I can slack off to heal off damage. I get Regenerator. Um, I also get Chili Reception, which is amazing. Uh, so I can, you know, slow pivot out basically just like a teleport and I can get into something that uh, has some really good offensive potential. So I think Slowking is going to be really, really awesome this season. Really stoked to have it. But third now on our list we have Gallade. We doubled up on the Psychic types here. In Newsflash, we do have one more Psychic type after this. Um, but, you know, we have a Snorlax for our Ghost Weakness, right? Uh, and that is Gallade. I think Gallade in this format is going to be an absolute terror of a wall breaker. I am a very big believer in Sharpness being, like, one of the most broken abilities on this thing in general. And the fact that, you know... Obviously, having base 80 speed or whatever it is isn't amazing, but having that base like 125 attack with sharpness boosted moves that are all like above base 100 damage now, including stab moves like Psycho Cut, uh, you know, Gallade is like one Swords Dance or like one agility away from just like going absolutely wild into teams. So I'm really, really excited. Gallade is one of those mons that I've wanted to draft for a very long time in normal formats. So the fact that we get it for a low tier league where I think it has a chance to shine is going to be really awesome. So as we move on to our fourth pick in the draft now, we pick up 
a grim snarl i wanted to pick up a dark type to help offset my weakness to prankster i also wanted to pick up a fairy type because fairy types in this format i feel are going to be uh, few and far in between and it also never hurts to have a prankster mon so i, I think that grim snarl is just like the premier screen setter and like status spreader support mon in normal formats but again like i've said with my previous few mons uh the fact that this is a low tier league i feel like grim snarl has a little bit more versatility than it normally would have uh basically what i mean by that is you know it's like Grim Snarl is no slouch on the offensive side of things, guys. Uh, you know, I get like a base like 125 attack stat, base 95 special attack. So uh, maybe some offensive Grim Snarls could be uh, something that we try out this season. Uh, but nonetheless, it's a really good pillar to have on our team to sort of build other things around and help support. So really excited. So to round out our first five mons in our first half of the draft here, we pick up a Palmot. Initially, I had Raikou on the team. And I was really excited to try Raikou, but the more I looked at it, I was like, man, it seems like so average, um, and which is a really a shame because I love Raikou and I was really excited to use it, but I felt like it just didn't really mesh well with what I was trying to do. And I wanted a little bit more wall breaking potential. And I think that Pawmot definitely gives me that. Um, also gets Volt Absorb to help out my Slow King and uh, one or two Mons that we drafted towards the back end of the draft. Uh, Iron Fist is great. We get Knock Off, Double Shot, Close Combat. Like Electric and Fighting Stab is really, really strong. Uh, so the fact that we get Pawmot, which is a relatively speedy Mon as well, speed is very important. Um, I think that people are going to have a hard time dealing with Palmot at times, and I feel like the damage potential that we're going to be able to throw out on this thing is going to be absolutely insane. So really jacked to have Palmot. I've seen a few other coaches in other leagues use it, and they always say it's a really, really fun Pokemon to use. So I'm really excited to see what it can do. So as you can see now, we're at 60 of our 95 points already. So our back half of the draft, we're going to have to get some mods that are, you know, of lesser points, of lesser quality, uh, but that is not true <laughs> when we draft an 11 point mon in Delphox. Uh, this is our last psychic type Pokemon that I was talking about. Um, I wanted a special threat. Uh, you know, we have Palmont, we have Gallade, which are really, really good physical sweepers. Uh, I wanted something on the special side that had really good speed and really good versatility. And I thought that Delphox was a really, really fun option. And I've always wanted to try Delphox out regardless. So, uh, you know, Fire and Psychic Stab is really, really awesome. We get things like Will-O-Wisp, Trick Room, um, you know, a variety of other different support moves that I think could actually be really, really useful for Delphox. Um, so I, I don't know, man. It just seems like a really solid bond. Obviously, it's it's relatively squishy. It's not going to be taking hits. But, you know, you slap a choice specs or a life orb or even a wise glasses on this thing, even a charcoal. Uh, and it's just doing astronomical damage. So I'm really jacked to have Delphox on the team. I think it's going to round out our offensive core really, really nicely. So for our seventh pick of the draft now, uh, we got to start thinking about Terra Captains pretty soon. So our first Terra Captain, we're throwing it back a couple seasons in APDL to our Arc. Ticuno. Uh, this thing is crazy as an open Terra type. Uh, being able to Terra into anything that I want, I think is really, really solid on this mod. Uh, Articuno is not typically known for its offensive prowess, but as a defensive mod, especially, um, I feel like, you know, having open Terra and being able to Terra into like, you know, really, really good defensive type like fairy, water, steel uh, is going to be a very big benefit to this mon, especially getting away from that four times weakness to rocks, which my team so far doesn't appreciate super well. Um, and, you know, even if I don't want to go super defensive on this Terra Captain, uh, you know, with my chilly reception synergy from my Slow King, I could just go Terra Ice on Articuno, slap a choice specs on it and just click Blizzard, which in my opinion, could be pretty good regardless. So uh, Articuno is such a fun mon. I, I know that it is relatively tough to use just because of the hazard weakness. But as a Terra Captain, like I said, I feel like it's going to be a really, really solid option. So on the offensive side of things, though, we have a Doug Trio. <laughs> um, this initially was Magmar, but with me um, picking up a Delphox, I didn't really need another fire type and another, you know, um, sort of bad weakness i guess you could say in like ground and stuff uh and doug trio is fast and doug trio hits pretty hard and doug trio you know normally suffers from having a not so great move pool uh but with access to open terra and that speed stat of like 120 it is um i feel like you know we could rattle off some really really big hits i could just slap a choice band on this thing and watch it go to town so obviously he's not going to be taking hits ever uh this is like a base 35 hp and like 50 in the defenses uh but 
when it comes to glass cannon actual mods and like my physical sweepers on this team are very very scary in my opinion so this kind of rounds out the core kind of a versatile terra option might not be a mod that comes every single week but in the weeks that it does i feel like it could actually be really really solid so we have 15 points left and there are a few holes that we have left in our team number one uh we don't really have any hazard removal so we wanted to pick up something um preferably that could get rid of hazards and also i need a grounded poison type so what better than to get a galarian wheezing return of stacks baby um obviously with levitate we're not technically a grounded poison type but we can also run two other really amazing abilities a misty surge and um neutralizing gas which is awesome for me um and we also get defog and initially this was a toad scroll but toad scroll just felt really really bad and toad scroll being my only spinner on the team at the time um you know it was like i don't want to be forced into bringing him on that i don't think is very good and i think that wheezing is very good and we pick up yet another fairy type which is awesome for us having two fairy types on this team i think is really really great um and Weezing's move pool is just awesome. You know, we get like Destiny Bond, we get Pain Split, we get Will-O-Wisp, we get Toxic, we get access to T-Spikes, we get like Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Sludge Bomb, we get a variety of good physical moves, Strange Steam, Misty Explosion if we want to do that. So um, I'm a big Weezing lover and I love Galarian Weezing. I've used it like once or twice in my draft league and it was like, frankly, it was almost an MVP to be totally honest. And in a low tier league, I feel like, especially with having that good of a defensive stat, I feel like it could be really, really hard to get through at times. And I really think that it's gonna shine here. So with one Mon left on our roster, um, I still have a relatively not great resistance to Ghost apart from my Snorlax. And I wanted a little bit more speed. So why not grab an Ambi Palm? Um, as you can see, this team is yielding more towards like the physical side of things with my Sweepers, my Delphox and my Arctic Kuno are kind of my best special attacking options, including my uh, Slow King, which is a little bit on the slower side. Um, but with that being said, you know, having to deal with, you know, base 105 Palmont or whatever it is, base 104 Delphox, base 120 Doug Trio, and base like 115 Ambipon, uh, teams are really going to have to invest a lot into speed if they want to cut over the top of that. Otherwise, you know, if they see like a bunch of physical sweepers, maybe they dump a lot into their defensive investments, which opens up things like my Delphox and my Articuno a lot too. So, uh, but as far as Ambipom is concerned, I think Ambipom's super underrated, man. Um, this is another mon that I feel has been uh, pushed to the back burner just simply because of power creep. Um, obviously, again, not gonna be super, super tanky ever, but like access to technician boosted moves, uh, access to knockoff, you know, access to like fast U-turns, the pivot potential, on this team is is pretty dang good too uh which i really really enjoy with like volt switch you turn uh flip turn that sort of thing chili reception uh and i think that ambipom is just a really really solid option i can come in just click like technician boosted fake out and you turn out and get like some really good chip on something um and it could do a variety of other things too i have some fun ideas that i want to try with ambipom this season i don't know if they're the best thing in the world uh but i have, I have some funny ideas so uh without further ado then as I get ready to pop my camera back in here. This is our roster for the UNPL Spring Fling, and it's here to stay because I have no free agent transactions left. Um, so we have Snorlax, Slowking, Gallade, Grimmsnarl, Palmot, Delphox, Terra Captains, Articuno, and Doug Trio, Weezing, Galar, and Ambipom. So let me know what you guys think of the team. Let me know if you think that there's some glaring weakness or something that's really, really funny on the team or some really fun set that you want to try. Um, our first game should be coming up relatively shortly, uh, probably sometime next week from the time this video goes out. So make sure you stick around for that. Like, subscribe, do all of the YouTube stuff, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.